In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can simplify your functions or actually freeze them in certain ways so that you can reuse them with a simplified signature. And this is going to be very similar to currying. So I'm going to show you both what it means to curry something and also the alternative, which is called partial. And it is very similar to currying. So I wanted to show you both alternatives, but this is going to simplify your functions a lot so that you can reuse them much easier. But before we get into the main purpose of this video, I'm going to show you some currying. So what is currying? And the best way to demonstrate this is to create a very simple function that's called multiply setup. And that's going to take a number of type floats. Now inside this function, we're going to create another function, a nested function called multiply. And here we're going to type in B of type float. And this will return to us a float. Now the nested function is going to return a times B. And the outer function is just going to return the inner function. So this is the first example of currying because now what we can actually do is something like this. We can say print multiply setup and here we can insert two. So we want to multiply everything by two and then on the outside we're going to multiply the number of three. And if we run this we will get six in the console. So as you can see we can use a parenthesis immediately after another parenthesis because we're returning the inner function but this is not really a common use case. A common use case would be to create another function, for example, double, and say that the multiply setup for double is going to be two, and we can do something similar under, which is called triple, and that's going to take multiply setup, and it's going to take three. So with both of these being done, we can now print the double of 10, and we can also print the triple of 10. So we've done the complex setup here, now all we have to do is reuse that function with that setup. So if we run the function now, you'll see that double effectively doubles the number and triple triples the number. And you can go even deeper than that if you want. You can add another nested function and another, but that's the basic concept of currying. And the downside to this is that it can get really complicated really fast in your logic when you're defying a function that is being curried. So a very nice alternative is the partial function from func tools. So immediately to use that, we need to import from func tools the partial. Now we're going to try to imitate what we did earlier, but this time I'm going to add some added functionality. So here we'll type in def multiply, and it's going to take an integer or a float called a and a float called b. And it's also going to take a name of type string or none, so it's an optional. And finally, it's going to return to us a float. Now, if there is a name, we're going to print this verbose text. So it's going to say formatted, and we're going to add a new line, which is going to give us the name followed by A and B, so we can see what we are inserting. So A is going to be A, and B is going to be B. And of course, all we want to do is return A times B. So it's a very simple multiply function, just as we did earlier. All it does is multiply two numbers and return the result. So let's do what we did earlier, except this time we're going to use partials. So here we can type in double, and double is going to equal a partial. And if you look at the parameters it accepts, first it takes the function name. So multiply without the parentheses, because we're going to specify the arguments and the keyword arguments immediately after. So now for the argument, I'm going to insert the number two. And we can duplicate this and say triple, and here we'll insert the number three. So already you can see this syntax is a lot easier to understand than what we were doing when we were currying. Now we can print double of 10, and we can print the triple of 10, and we're going to get the same result, or actually we're missing a required argument, and that is because this optional should actually be equal to none initially. But if we run this now, we'll get 20 and 30. And if name should also be checking that it is not none, because I forgot that an empty string also evaluates to false. But going back to the partials, we've created the same thing that we did with currying, except this time we used a partial. And using a partial does have some more advantages because right now it 
helped us create a function that was easy to use and it helped us to specify the parameters we wanted to include. And I didn't really show you, but you can also add keyword arguments such as name and you can say this is double. And when you run this, it's going to give us the verbose version. So double with A being two and B being 10. So we can add the keyword arguments to these and you can also specify which numbers you want to use in which order. So if you type in B is equal to three and here we'll type in triple and this actually has to be name is equal to triple, you'll see that the 10 we're inserting is going to be passed into A instead of being passed into B. So if we run this, you'll see now that we have double that takes A as two and B as 10 because here we covered the first argument with two, which means that the second argument was going to be 10. But here we specified that B is going to be equal to three. So the only missing argument we have is A. So now when we pass in A, it passed it into the first slot, which is A. So that's something more complex you can do with partials. And a major difference with currying, and I'm just going to bring it back because it's easier to compare it side by side. So a major difference with currying is that you can only use one parameter at a time or one argument at a time. So first you need to specify A, then you need to specify B. So if you have plenty of arguments and keyword arguments, you cannot do that in currying. It just takes one at a time, so you can slowly simplify that. But with the partial function, you can specify as many arguments as you want inside that partial to simplify it so you can create that setup to make this as easy to use as possible. So maybe for a multiply function, it's not that useful, but sometimes you'll have these functions with a lot of parameters and a lot of arguments. And at the end of the day, you might want to have something such as, let's pretend this is a get URL. So we'll change that to get URL. And at the end of the day, you might want to have something that just takes a URL. So www subscribe.com, for example. And this is the final result of what we want to use, a simplified version of the function. But of course, all the setup will be inside here, all the headers, all the parameters, and everything will be covered because inside that partial, we took care of that setup. So every time we want to reuse that, we can just insert a URL and the rest of our code is going to look really clean. But let's take this back because multiplying a get URL doesn't make much sense in my head. So at the end of the day, this is just a convenience for your code. You might have a function that needs to be simplified and this is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. And I would definitely recommend you play around with this because it can be something beautiful for your code if you have very complex functions that require you to repeat a lot of specific parts. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. Do let me know what you think about partials or what you think about currying and which one you prefer or if you find that you use one more than the other. And if there are some use cases you use one or the other in, I'd be very happy to hear about that. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.